February the 15th. Hostages return home. 73 towels missing. <laughs> Gaza's future in doubt. Kebab arm broken. <laughs> hey, gone tour. Catch him before he's famous. Please welcome the man who loves a warm entrance, Mr. Ian Lee. Sobs. We haven't even told a joke yet. It might be rubbish. Hello and welcome to the 11 o'clock show. Yep, we're back and it's not just because of all your letters imploring our return, but because the Channel 4 lawyers have been complaining they didn't have quite enough cock gags to sift through. <laughs> Here we go. Well, here's what you missed while we were away. Remember Millennium Night? It was a night of once-in-a-lifetime experiences. The river of fire, the Ferris wheel, and I finally got a shag. <laughs> Technically, there was no shag. It was a hand job, but it still sort of counts. That's fine. <laughs> It, it, it was my hand. But, <laughs> while in Russia that night, boozing Boris Yeltsin retired saying, I realise now I've lost the best years of my life to alcoholism. My greatest regret is having never been the president of Russia. <laughs> no, because he was drunk all the time. He didn't rem rem OK. <laughs> the, the year 2000 started with a flu epidemic which killed hundreds of pensioners. And if the flu didn't get them, then Dr Shipman did. But, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Before we condemn Shipman, though, let's think about how many people he's cured. It wasn't so much kill, 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 more kill, kill, heal, kill. So, there's a balance there. And all hail the Queen! Michael Portillo's back to save the Tories. He's already done U-turns on the minimum wage and the gay age of consent. Now, this is a fantastic double bonus. Better deals for rent boys and more of them. <laughs> uh, applause from that bloke there. Very dodgy. On the other hand, Tony Blair has slid down in popularity. The honeymoon may be over, but Tony says he'll keep fucking us for at least ten more years. <laughs> but enough of this crazy, nostalgic nonsense. Please welcome the girl who's always pleased to see you, Daisy Donovan! <laughs> So my cheerful smile hides something, Oh, Ian. dear. Yeah, I'm worried about Gaza. Oh. Stuck at home with a broken arm, unable to do the one thing he loves. I mean, I'm thinking of going round his house and punching Cheryl on myself. <laughs> Thanks for those oh. words of wisdom, Daisy. Oh, no, not a problem, Ian. Now, let me tell you what's coming up on tonight's show. Our news Avenger rings the truth out of round-the-world yachtswoman Tracy Edwards. When I say, did you ever want to run away, really your answer's no. Actually. No, it's, it's still yes. <laughs> We'll be getting the lowdown on high society with Tara Palmer Tomkinson. And as for Ian... The government plans to give £1,000 to every newborn baby. I'll be out discovering what the man on the street thinks about this. <laughs> a thousand quid for a kid? God, what do you think, Ian? Well, it's brilliant. Hard-up women are going to be gagging for it. Well done, Tony! <laughs> now it's time for tonight's headlines. And tonight's top stories. William Hague is touring the country on the back of a truck. Experts say it's the first recorded example of dodgy goods falling onto the back of a lorry. <laughs> the real reason for the hostages' return to Afghanistan is revealed with this footage of their early morning wake-up call at the Stansted Hilton. <laughs> New evidence has emerged to explain the high Russian casualties in the war in Chechnya. <laughs> It's been revealed that the minimum wage is to be increased by 10 pence. Workers in Sunderland are looking forward to buying a second home. <laughs> Sports news. Manchester United fans in Saudi Arabia were shocked to find out that they will have to pay double for their replica kit. The shirts will cost an arm and a leg, or just a hand if you steal them. <laughs> and those were today's headlines. Earlier, 73 of the Afghan hostages have arrived back home in Afghanistan. For more on that story, here's Paul Garner with this report. As the first group of Afghanis from the Stansted hijack crisis flew home yesterday, the British government was left facing some pretty tough questions about its treatment of the hostages. Most significantly, how did a bunch of grimy, unshaven foreigners come over here and stuff their faces on free steaks and margaritas at the Hilton, then bugger off home and complain that our food was shit? <laughs> 
During the crisis, security sources at Stansted were understandably tight-lipped, but today more details of the four-day ordeal have emerged. It seemed the female passengers suffered the most, as all films shown on board to help pass the time were not shown in widescreen. <laughs> With security forces amassing behind the aircraft, the hijackers surrendered when they feared that airport staff would be sent in to take them from the rear. Although it was widely assumed that the hijack was an attempt to gain asylum, an in-flight video found on board the aircraft suggests that the passengers could have been here for more innocent reasons. Taliban Travel are pleased to welcome you on your seven-day break to the United Kingdom. On arrival at your resort, you'll spend four days relaxing on a piss-soaked Boeing. <laughs> Sit back and watch the world's press go by. Treat yourself and spend two romantic evenings with hard-nosed immigration officials at the world-famous Stansted Hilton, which boasts breathtaking views of Birchhanger motorway services and the majestic M11. The hijack may be over, but questions about the future of the remaining Afghanis goes on. People want to know why, when so many applied for political asylum, have half of them been flown home already? And not the whole bloody lot of them. This is Paul Garner for the 11 o'clock show at the Home Office. And for the latest on that story, go over now live to Paul Garner. Paul, have there been any more details released of the hijack itself? Yes, Ian, it is apparent that the Afghani hijackers were redirected to Stansted in Essex because it was felt they'd feel quite at home in a county renowned for dressing its women in ridiculous outfits where any male over the age of seven owns a gun and where they listen to shit music every weekend, religiously. The Afghanis had also hoped to get some camels when they were here but have had to accept the compromise of a fleet of second-hand Ford XR3Is, which at least are guaranteed to have had a hump in the back of them at some stage. Thanks very much, Paul. Thank you, Ian. Spot the odd one out. Doogie Howser, MD, Dangerfield and Dr Harold Shipman. The answer? Well, it's Doogie Howser, MD, of course. He's the only practising medic with hairless nuts. We are, <laughs> we are talking Dangerfield pre-Nigel Havers, of course. Bearded Shipman, however, is the only doctor to have killed some grannies, triggering media speculation into the everyday practice of our GPs. The papers are full of scare stories, so how can you be sure your doctor's not one to watch out for? It's easy, just follow our simple questionnaire. You go to your local GP with a mild case of flu, does he? A. Ask you to lie on the couch and prescribe you a course of antibiotics. B. Ask you to lay in a coffin while he makes some adjustments to your will. <laughs> your doctor calls you into his surgery, does he? A. Greet you with a warm smile that instills you with confidence in his abilities. Or B. Greet you wearing his mother's nightie. <laughs> you invite your doctor around for drinks with your neighbours, does he? A. Arrive with a good bottle of Chablis. B. Arrive with a fat bird called Primrose. <laughs> you visit your doctor complaining of a sore throat, does he? A. Ask you to stick out your tongue and say, ah. Uh... Or B. Ask you to stick out your tongue and say, ah, uh, I'm an 80-year-old woman, I leave everything to you. <laughs> Now, if you answered mostly A's, your doctor sounds like a first-class medic, mostly B's, and quite frankly, he may be abusing his position. And that was our Murdering Medics questionnaire. <laughs> Still to come in part two, our showbiz correspondent, Tara Palmer-Tomkinson. And now, with the new millennium finally upon us, Reading reject Ricky Gervais looks back at some of the landmarks of 20th century social history. Tonight, women's rights. See you after the break. In 1903, Emmeline Pankhurst set up a new society called the Women's Social and Political Union. It believed in action, not words, and how demonstrations and attacked property in protest against the lack of women's rights. These suffragettes, or lesbians, were often arrested and put in jail. But they had a field day. In 1913, one of the more mental bean flickers threw herself under the king's horse at the Derby with catastrophic results. It brought him down, and Lucky Jim romped it at 14 to 1. The leather died. Probably a shock. <laughs> First time she'd ever been jumped. <laughs> anyway, they had to start in the war, so in 1918 we gave them the vote. This didn't just benefit baggage handlers. No, thanks to these early women, normal girls can now pop along to the polling station after shopping or picking the kids up from school and put a little tick next to their favourite lady politician. <laughs> of course, nowadays there are muff bandits in all walks of life. They still usually write biffers like Katie Lang or Ellen. 
but now and again a real babe turns fishmonger, and that's a waste. <laughs> Next week, Gay Rights. Hello and welcome back to the 11 o'clock show. Now for a recap of the day's top stories. Low pay to get extra £4 per week. Scratch card sales set to rocket. <laughs> Paul Gascoigne breaks arm. Arm was looking at my bird, says Gaza. <laughs> Report states half of all teenagers have sex while drunk. Research reveals it's the bottom half. <laughs> We would like to take a moment now to apologise for remarks we made last series during an item on Paul Gascoigne, who yesterday had his forearm shattered when another player viciously smashed his face against it. During our tribute to Gazza, in which we genuinely intended to celebrate the career of one of Britain's most talented sportsmen, a number of small technical errors crept in. Our profile should have been titled Gascoigne Portrait of a Legend, and not, as we broadcast, Gazza Portrait of a Bell End. <laughs> Computer problems led to scripting errors. The word footballer was repeatedly replaced by pie eater. <laughs> Goal scoring became pie eating. And the phrase delighted the crowd with an inspired touch was broadcast as sat about in his pants shoveling handfuls of pie in his fat mouth till pastry came out of his blobby ass. <laughs> we are sorry for any confusion this may have caused. Finally, we apologise for the error in which a slow-motion montage of Gaza's career highlights was inexplicably replaced by this. <laughs> and that concludes our apology to the lumbering, broken-armed half-wit. <laughs> Daisy, what do you think will give a child the best start in life? Uh, off the cuff, I'd say loving parents, comfortable surroundings, and the maximum possible distance between it and a pack of hungry wolves raised on the taste of baby flesh. All valid points, but Tony <laughs> Blair reckons what a newborn baby needs most is cash, an entire grand's worth. Is he wrong? I went to find out. The government have announced new plans to give every baby born £1,000 to invest in their future. But will this lead to them being better educated at business or just better at spunking the lot at the wall? I've come into London <laughs> to find out. The government are going to give £1,000 to every newborn baby. Good idea or bad idea? Good idea. Can we trust a baby to look after its own money? Surely it's just going to leave it lying around or shit on it. No, I don't think so. Should that baby be given £1,000 or the equivalent in cigarettes? A thousand pounds, not cigarettes, no. But no, but you think about it, in the, in, in the, in the future, a thousand pounds will only get you about two and a half packets of fags, won't it? Now it'll get you 240 packs. No, you don't need cigarettes. I'm not saying, you, you know, the baby should smoke them all now. Do you think the kids have it too easy these days? Because in your day, you'd have to get bummed for a shilling, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, you know, sherbet dips are 25 pounds a bag, and uh, space dust is now 40, 40 quid an ounce. <laughs> it's just something crazy. Crazy, I think, is the word. Yeah. Yes. Are you worried that if your child got a grand from birth, it might not talk to you? It might think you're too common. It, you know, now it's all nouveau riche. No. Hey, mummy, I'm not talking to you. You're too short to talk to. I'm poor. <laughs> no. You're too short, poor, mummy. It's horrible. You've got glasses. No. Finally, Stansted Airport or on alert because a load of Afghanistan yeah, 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 baby yeah. commandos yeah. have hijacked a jumbo just to get free cash. How can we stop these babies taking over planes and coming and landing in our country? <laughs> well, you can't. So there we have it. Although some adults are upset at missing out, I, like the Scarlet Pimpernel, have cleverly disguised myself to claim my grand. This is Billy and Lee, The 11 O'Clock Show, London. Now time to tell you about tonight's guest. As the original It Girl, she's got a nose for news like no other. A society belle who hobnobs with the rich, the famous and the infamous. She's never afraid to fire from both barrels. So, who better to ask about the headlines than a headline maker? Please welcome Tara Palmer Tomkinson. How's it going? Great fancy. 
We should dress up. Well, I found this in the wardrobe, actually. I've got such greasy hair. I had to put this hat on, otherwise oh. I thought it would be very offensive. No, you look fantastic with a pink cowboy hat on. Lovely. Now, Tara, we've asked you on to help us understand the murky world of showbiz, and let's be honest, no one else is more qualified than you, apparently. Don't know about we want, that. We want you to snip out the real stories, read between the lines, and use your razor-sharp wit, OK? Oh. Sorry, I shouldn't, shouldn't have said that bit. Oh, really? Sorry. We've collected some of the... Uh, mate, don't worry about it. We've collected some of the major celebrity stories of the last few days, and we'd like you to give us your informed showbiz opinion on them. Gaza has almost certainly put an end to his career by breaking his arm last night, so some people say that Gaza's, you know, he's just misunderstood. <laughs> what do you think? Jekyll or Hyde? <sighs> Definitely misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> I can't understand his Geordie accent, that's what it is. <laughs> and he's got pies in his mouth. <laughs> OK. Animal right activists are now saying that wearing leather is as bad as wearing fur, um, and they're going to outlaw it. So you're a former best-dressed woman of the year, I hear. Leather. Style or vile? I think leather's great. I mean, you know, they're always going to have a... Go they are going to have a go at something. I can... You know, I see it from both angles, but, I mean, you know... I don't want to say... I don't know if I want to say this, but if the animal is dead... Then you might as well make but some nice leather trousers. But you have to kill it. it. <laughs> That's I know, but maybe they could just use ones which are already. No, because they'd be really shit leather, Old really animals. bad quality. <laughs> you want it's really young. Okay, I don't know. I don't want to get caught trousers. in the political argument. You can see I'm sort of, you know, I'm, I'm a bit wet. Really. So you wear leather yourself? I can't see well, that. I do wear. <laughs> about the argument. That about the argument. Yes. I'm talking yes. about. The Oscar nominations were announced tonight, and the film that swept the board is American Beauty, currently on release in this country. Let's have a quick look at a clip. Smile, Hi. you're at Mr. Smiley's. Would you like to try our new beef and cheese pot pie on a stick, just $1.99 for a limited time only? We were just at a seminar. Uh, buddy, this is my... Her husband. We've met before, but something tells me you're going to remember me this time. <laughs> The question everyone's asking, is it better than Caddyshack? <laughs> it's a great film about golf, I'll lend it to you. <laughs> oh, 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 no, no, Caddyshack, definitely. Cool. Obviously. Caddyshack all the way. Um, new movie The Beach has just missed out on an Oscar nomination, but Leo Mania is gripping the country yet again. What do you think of him? Well, I thought The Beach was fantastic, and I think he's, you know, I think he's pretty hot. He's not really... I'm not a Le big Leo-looking fan. Mm. He's not my type of man. But um, I think, you know, God, I mean, I mean, I went to the premiere last week and the hordes of women outside screaming for him was unbelievable. Um, now, that film was something I really liked. Mm. I mm. said halfway through, I said, you know, it's really like Lord of the Flies, you know. And this guy said, I haven't read that. I said, you haven't read Lord of the Flies? I mean, I haven't read it. <laughs> you still have a go at him for not reading it. I like that. That's good. Um, Babyface Leo's been praised for his role in the film, so let's take a look at him here. Oh. oh, it's a little boy. Is that you? Yeah, that's, that was me this morning. Now, Tara, before you go, we'd like your opinion on tomorrow's headlines. We can't be sure what they'll actually be, but so we've just oh, made some up. Take a staggering yeah, guess. We'll have a go. Mm. So, Oscars Jacko nominated Breaststroke <laughs> Star Wow's Academy. <laughs> Another brilliant one. Yep, and brilliant. finally, God forbid, the sun Thor heard my coke hurl. Oh, that's the best one. That's the, that's the one. Ladies and gentlemen, Tara Palmer Tomkinson. Time for some news, Justin. A new team to monitor the police has been set up called Offcop. It's based on a pilot scheme running in Manchester called Piss Off Cop. <laughs> Nightclub owner Peter Stringfellow has explained his recent support for William Hague. He said, I just can't resist big tits. <laughs> Reinvented rock star David Bowie is to have a baby at 53. He is said to be delighted, as in the past, a little bundle of joy weighing six pounds six ounces was something he snorted up his nose. <laughs> when asked whether he would prefer a boy or a girl, he replied that he was a happily married man now and those days were long behind him. <laughs> it's been reported that more and more American women are joining the Ku Klux Klan. A Klan spokesman said that women members are just the same as men, except they change their sheets more often. <laughs> Royal News and Madame Tussauds has unveiled a dummy of Princess Diana wearing a replica of her wedding dress. When the exhibit closes, they hope to reuse the waxwork as a candle in the wind. <laughs> An Iranian foundation has increased the bounty on Salman Rushdie's head to £1.7 million. If the prize is not claimed by terrorists this Saturday, there'll be a rollover. <laughs> and that was the news just in. There. 
A good news story must always have three key ingredients. A murdering doctor and any two other key ingredients. <laughs> Failing that, what do you do? Well, our news Avenger reckons she's got the answer. See what you think. Yeah, nice. Close up on the child's stump. Hello. <laughs> You'll obviously recognise me. I work in television news. News is reality, and reality is a dog. You've got to make it bite. It's not easy, but here's how it's done. Roll E.T. B.T.? Don't correct me. <laughs> you are? Tracy Edwards. And your data, remember, was? When I skipped the first all female crew to do the Whitbread Round the World race. Do you want to talk about it? Let's talk. OK. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. What makes me so special? How do I always get what I want, unlike my contemporaries, not through munching boardroom cock? <laughs> I simply understand my subjects. I flatter them. Were you, in a way, the maiden's wicked dictator? I'm sure the girls did, at some points... Call you Pol Pot. Didn't, well, they didn't call me Pol Pot, so they would have been off the boat. But when you leave the dock, there has to be one voice on the boat, yeah. and the one voice is the voice of the skipper. And you have to be aware of that yourself. You do have to think, you know, I am Pol Pot, and this no. is my year zero. <laughs> no, that's not what I thought at all. Never forget, television is show business, and even the news has to have a little showmanship. Try dropping a few celebrity names. I heard a little rumour that Nicole Kidman, who learnt to sail in dead calm, oh, yeah. had applied. Unfortunately not, no. Do you want to just say that she did, just say, uh, yes, she didn't? I can't, because she didn't. OK. <laughs> On the last project, um, it was rumoured that Elle McPherson was um, going to be applying. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. true. And Meryl Streep. And, and my project manager would just have had a complete heart attack and killed over if that had happened. That would be brilliant. But did you consider Meryl? <laughs> um, she didn't apply. She did? Not to me, she didn't. Oh, didn't she? No. <laughs> In sound like generation, people want facts. And the fact is, people love sound bites. That's where I come in. Did you think, what the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, we did. Why don't I say, did you feel dead in the head? And then you say, yes, it put a strain on the membrane. I felt highly but stressed it's out. It's not something I'd say. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's <laughs> too cliché. I just wouldn't it's say it. It's too cliché. You were dead in the head. It was a strain on the membrane. You were really stressed out. Stressed out, big time. <laughs> you see, that's my talent. I connect with people. Where's the fucking stump? Well Jesus, Earl, take a breath mint. <laughs> and that's all from tonight's show. Tomorrow night, naked funny man Ben Miller is our guest. But before the ads, here's a commercial that you won't be seeing, an aborted Shane Ritchie doorstep challenge in which the crew inadvertently call it the Manchester home of Mrs Primrose Shipman. Hello, love. While your husband's at work, could you spare a minute to talk to us about this incredible new washing powder? It removes egg, gravy and diamorphine. <laughs> OK. You fucked a monster. <laughs> and the 11 o'clock show is back tomorrow at 11 o'clock. <laughs>